This is HGT 119. We the objective of this week lesson is to describe the difference between series and parallel circuits, explain the types of electrical circuits, understand the type of circuits used in the HVAC refrigeration industry, discuss how current flow in series circuits, discuss how current flow in parallel circuits, calculate the voltage, resistance, and current in series circuits, and calculate the voltage, resistance, and current in parallel circuits. In the HVAC refrigeration field, a technician will find all types of electrical circuits to work on and have the knowledge to troubleshoot these circuits is very important for the technician to understand. This week, we will discuss the differences in series and parallel circuits and learn which type of circuits is most commonly used in the HVAC industry because most circuits to be found in the HVAC field are combination circuits we will and we will discuss how these combination circuits are used to operate and control devices. Some returns we need to go over this week is parallel circuits, series circuits, open circuit, a closed circuit, combination circuits, loads, and switches. A series circuit is basically having a load. A load is anything that consumes electricity, such as a light bulb or electric heater. Motors are loads also. So a series circuit is a circuit that have only one path for current to flow. It can have more than one load, but the uh, current must flow through all the loads at the same time and the same rate. The series circuit will have a power source, conductors, and at least one load. For example, since there is only one path for current to flow, many of us understand how Christmas tree lights. If you take one bulb out, they all go out. A series circuit, if you take one load out, there is an open circuit. So, the rules of series circuits is voltage. In a series circuit, the total voltage is the sum of all the individual voltage of each load. So basically, if we measure the voltage drop at each load, or each light bulb, or each uh, resistor, add them up, that would be the total voltage. Current in a series circuit works in this way. The current is the same for all the, the loads. So in other words, it, no matter where you check the current draw, it will be the same. So it will be equal throughout the whole system. The total resistance of the resistors in a series circuit is equal to the sum of all the individual resistors. So if you want to determine what the total resistance in a series circuit, just add all the individual resistance up and you will have the total resistance in the circuit. So expressing the rules of a series circuit. Voltage equal the same, we add them all together, the sum of all the individual uh, voltage will equal the total. The resistance, the sum of all the individual resistance will equal the total. The current is the same throughout the circuit no matter where you check it. Here's a diagram of a series circuit. It has two bulbs in series with each other. The power source is a battery. There's a fuse and there's a switch. So basically, if you look at Ohm's law, it states basically electricity equals the current times the resistance. So E equals electricity, I equals current flow, and R is the resistance. A series circuit is the simplest circuit. The conductors, controls, and protection devices that is in the system, such as loads, and a power source are connected with only one path for the current to flow. The resistance 
of each device can be different the same amount of current will flow through each of those no matter what the resistance in the circuit is. The voltage across each will be different. It would be based on its resistance. So the resistance of each load would determine what the voltage drop of each load will be. If the path is broken, no current will flow and no part of the circuit works. Going back to the same example with the Christmas tree, take a light bulb out, all the lights go out. So what type of circuit is a parallel circuit? Parallel circuits have more than one branch line and will have at least one load per branch line. Parallel circuits have the same voltage for each branch line and the voltage will be the same as the total voltage or the source of the voltage. A parallel circuit will have multiple loads, a power source, and conductors to join each branch to, uh, line together. So a parallel circuit has more than one path for current to flow, which is different from a series circuit which only have one path for current to flow, but a parallel circuit has more than one path. That's what make it parallel. The same voltage is applied across each branch line. If the load resistance in each branch line is the same, the current in each branch line will be the same. If the load resistance in each branch line is different, the current in each branch line will be also different. If one branch line is broken, current will continue to flow to the other branches. So the rules of Parallel circuits. If two or more components are connected in a parallel circuit, they have the same potential difference, which we call voltage, across their ends. The potential difference across the components are the same in magnitude, and they also have identical polarities. The same voltage is applied or an applicable to all circuits components connected in parallel. The total current is the sum of the current through the individual components in accordance to Kirchhoff current law, which we'll discuss later. So voltage in a parallel circuit is the same for all the elements or all the branch lines. So each branch lines will receive the same amount of voltage. So if the total voltage or the source of the power supply is 120, each branch line will receive 120 also. The current in each individual resistor is found by Ohm's law, factoring out the voltage gives. So in other words, to find the total resistance of all the components, add the reciprocal of the resistance of each component or branch line and take the reciprocal of the sum. The total resistance will always be less than the value of the smaller resistance. So when you're looking at a parallel circuit and you want to know what the total resistance is, one thing to keep in mind the total resistance will always be less than the smallest individual resistance in either of the branch lines. So that is very important to keep in mind. If you're doing calculations, you want to determine what the resistance in a, a parallel circuit is, is basically a quick check is to know that always it will be less. A parallel circuit has multiple paths or branches to ground or going through the circuit. Therefore, in the event of an open and a circuit in one of the branch, current will continue to flow through the remaining. Number two, each branch receives the source voltage. Number three, current flow through each branch can be different and it will be different based on the resistance in each branch. And lastly, 
the resistance of each branch can be different in that parallel circuit. Combination circuits is like putting a series circuit and a parallel circuit together. In the HVAC field, it's most common to find um, series parallel circuits or combination circuits. We usually don't have um, what you call loads, things that consume energy in series with each other, but all the controls or the switches will be in series with the load. And these switches will be in series to be able to operate and control the, the on and off of the operation of the load. So, a series parallel circuit has some components in series and others in parallel. The power source and control of or protection devices are usually in series. The loads are usually in parallel. The same current flows in the series portion differ or the current in the parallel portion. The same voltages apply to the parallel devices different voltages to the series devices. If the series portion is broken, current stops flowing to the entire circuit. If a parallel branch line is broken, current continues to flow in the series portion and the remaining branch lines. What are the rules of a series parallel circuit? So we look at a combination circuit. A resistance and lamp may be connected in a circuit as illustrated on the next slide. This type of uh, connecting method is called series parallel connection and is uh, a combination of series and parallel connections. The interior dashboard lights are a good example. By adjusting the rheostat, which is a variable resistor, or sometimes we call it a dimmer switch, you can increase or decrease the brilliance of the lights. So we look at this diagram and we see a real stat or variable resistor in series of the load. And basically by increasing the resistance of that real stat, the, the lights will go dimmer and by uh, decreasing the uh, resistance of that real stat, the light bulbs will glow brighter in that parallel circuit. So in other words, the real stat is in series of the lights and the lights are in parallel with each other. So combination circuits, the combined resistance, we look at this diagram and it's giving us for a parallel circuits how to determine the um, resistance or determine the total resistance in a parallel circuit. So basically, if you have only two resistance in a circuit, we can do the product over the sum. In other words, multiply the two resistance by each other, then divide it by the sum, which is adding the two resistors together. And that will give us the total resistance. Of course, it's only used when you have only two different resistors in a parallel circuit. So the same goes with this, and we look working through the problems, the understanding that if you have uh, a couple of resistors, you can add them together. But when it's um, more, more than one, then you have to do the uh, product over the sum. And going through, we see how then determine the resistance of R2, which is a combination of resistance of one and combined resistance of one connected in series. The total current, which is I, the letter I, flowing in the circuit can be determined from Ohm's law as follow. I equals voltage over resistance. So if you look at the combination of the um, product over sum for the resistance, we can still use this uh, number to determine what the current is if we know the voltage. So, the voltage applied to a 
R2 and R3 can be found by the following formula. Voltage equals R1 times current, which is I, which equals R2 plus or multiplied by R3 divided by R2 plus R3 times the current. So both of these are the same formula, it's just expressing different ways. So where you see on the right, where you see the product over the sum, is how we determine to get V1 equals R1 times I. So we're going through the combination circuits current, uh, the current 1 and current 2 equals the, the current flow through the resistance and R1, R2, and R3 in the series parallel connection as shown below can be determined as follows. And we look at the diagram we can see how it was worked out by looking at the power source going through the resistance the two in parallel with each other and the one resistance that is in series with each other. Basically this is the same diagram we saw with the light bulbs but we looked at the resistance of the light bulbs, then look at the resistance of the real stat. So to summarize the rules of series parallel and combination circuits, the rules to figure out voltage, resistance, and current for series and parallel circuits are different, and a technician needs to understand and learn the difference. There are three different types of electrical circuits. Of course, the three types of electrical circuits are the series circuit, the parallel circuit, and a combination circuit. Loads in an electrical control system would always be in a parallel of each other. That is how all devices are operating. We can understand lights in a building or in an office. The lights are in parallel because if one light bulb blew out, all the lights will go out. So it's practical to use lights or all different type of loads even in the HVC field in parallel. And the switches and controls will be in series with the load. So switches always will be in series with the load in the electrical circuit. Because the switches being in series of the load and the loads being in parallel of each other this is what makes HVAC circuits combination circuits. 